Welcome back everybody to the Home Inspection YouTube channel. Today we are inspecting like a 1960s home. It's a, it's a ranch style home. And what I like to consider this is a good first time home buyer home. But at the same time as first time home buyers, if you don't want to tackle a home with issues, don't go with an older home because these homes are always going to have problems. We're always going to find something. And if you don't, if you can't, if you don't have the tolerances to tackle anything like that, then just move straight to the new builds. New builds are going to have issues too, but you don't have to fix them. The builder does. So that being said, let's go around, talk about this property. Let me show you everything that I found on it and let's go check it out. All right, so we're gonna go up to the roof first and uh, show you some of the things that we found on the roof. We're here with Josh. We're gonna try to get Josh in this video too. He's finding some things in the attic. So uh, I'm gonna knock out the roof. I'm gonna do the exterior with you and then we're gonna have Josh do the attic space and some of the interior finds. So on this roof, a common mistake that happens with most roofers is they install these composite shingles in less than a two and 12 pitch. This pitch right here on this roof is about a 1 in 12 or a 0 0.5 in 12, in which easily we can make this roof leak. The shingles are not designed for a flat roof system, and what happens is you get wind-driven rains or water sits in certain areas, or it doesn't travel across the shingles fast enough, and you end up getting leaks on this roof. I don't know why they do it. They might not know any better, but this is a very common mistake on home flippers where they don't install the shingles correctly. So. Let's walk around and I'll show you some areas. And then Josh did find some water stains in the attic too as well. So uh, let's look at some of these finds on the roof. So I do just do a general scan of the roof, just showing, you know, the pitch of the roof. And then right here, whenever you see like a, a lot of heavy caulking around, around any plumbing stacks, that should throw off some red flags. And then uh, right here, whenever you have, we have the, the satellite dish, what I like to do is you like to step around here. It seems pretty solid right now, but I, I like to put a lot of pressure around the, uh, the plumbing jacks just to see if we have any issues. See right here, we have some heavy staining in this area and some pitting. We do have a tree here, so that did probably scrape the roof at one point in time, but um, I actually like, to, you wanna just be careful with your footing but you just want to put some pressure in here to fill the decking. So yeah, this is probably just tree damage. Oh, oh, see it's soft right here. And uh, that's probably from water sitting in this area, it being a low pitch. And yeah, it's an easy find. So we're definitely going to need a roofer to come out here. And like I said, as a first time home buyer, you're purchasing something like this or I'd recommend to easily put a membrane roof on this because you're gonna you already have some soft spots in this area. The chimney flashing looks a little weak. None of the plumbing stacks are done correctly, and it's not if this roof will leak. It's just a matter of time. So this is uh, our first find on this, and uh, an easy thing that y'all can negotiate on. And it's good the home inspector found it today. So. Let's uh, look at some of the exterior finds now. And then this is another angle of the roof here. You can see how the roof has a wave to it and it's and there's a lot of angles. And right here, the pitting again, you can see it from that point of view. So whenever you're inspecting a roof or looking at a roof, it's good to see it from a lot of different angles. You don't wanna come up with an opinion too quickly. Spend your time up here and really just do, do a scan and, and take your time because you'll find all kinds of stuff. So, you know, from the ground level, Whenever I was inspecting this, I was like, oh great, look, there's a brand new roof. You know, not that I'm saying I wouldn't do this, but you could come to a judgment and not even come up here. But it's good to get your feet on the roof and really evaluate everything because you can find roof leaks, plumbing stacks not installed properly, and definitely get a roofer to give you a quote on how much it's gonna cost to fix all these items. Okay, working on the exterior of the property, what I like to do is pick a side with the gate and do a close pass around the front or back, and then I'll do a wide pass and then repeat the same process in the backyard. Uh, this allows you to see the home from two points of view and uh, really come up with a full opinion. Remember, whenever you see something, don't be like, oh my gosh, that's bad. Really just say, all right, I see this, and then we'll figure it out as we go throughout the, the your routine on the home inspection. I know that sounded a little funny, but honestly, it makes sense. And you'll see here in a minute why it makes sense. So flipped home and you have new windows, which is always a good sign. Uh, it shows that they may have spent some money on the property. Uh, but right here, what you see here is 
this looks funny to us, right? You have two different color bricks. You're like, man, what's going on here? And some people would automatically, I don't know, think foundation issues or something like that. And to me, this actually just looks like where a door used to be going into the garage and they removed it and they put a laundry room here instead. So um, this is this is an okay fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with this. They did it fine. It looks it looks perfect. Just just if you paint the brick, you never know. Um, Walking around the exterior too, another good signs that you're seeing that, you know, we have straight lines across the brick, which is good. You have fiber cement siding. They replaced all the masonite and or wood siding and they add soft events around the exterior. So moving on to the other side of the property, we didn't find too much wrong with the front. Now we're on the right side of the property. And the trick that you see me say pretty often is I say, look down the brick line. Well, when we did our first pass of the interior, we noticed that there's a a small slope in the floor here. And we're like, okay, well, we saw that. Now let's evaluate it from the exterior of the property. And now looking down the brick line, it looks like the property drops about an inch and a half or two inches in this corner. And this is just a guess. We'll use our zip level here in a minute to figure out what's going on with this or how much of the floor slopes. And But the real reason is, is you're like, hey, why is this happening? You want to think, you know, there's a lot of things going on and it always has to deal with water. So if you look at the, the grading here, you have a lot of dips in this side of the property. The property, again, is in the 1960s. So it's had poor drainage for a long period of time and the slab has dropped in this area because of the amount of moisture. Does this necessarily mean it's bad? Actually, no. You know, a lot of these properties are going to have floor slopes or settlement in the Houston area. But the thing is, is you wanna do something to prevent it from getting worse. So what we need to do is recommend to add in piers or bare minimum to add in a drainage path to prevent the sloping from getting any worse. And if this sits about an inch and a half, I'd say that's pretty normal for an older property. But uh, coming down the line here, you can really see uh, the deflection crack that's happened and they pointed the mortar here pretty recently. And you can see this crack is wider at the top and it scrolls down and, it, and it's smaller at the bottom here. And that's what I would actually call deflection. So how that's gonna be written up is a, found, a home inspector, we're required whenever we see deflection in a property that's I'd say larger than normal, which this is on tolerance. This is pretty close. So what we have to do is we have to write this up to be further evaluated, but the main thing is, is you are going to need to take some sort of action and that's the reason why we recommend for further evaluation. So either if you fix the grading or you add peers, that's up to you as a home buyer. Uh, if you want my opinion, what I would do is I would fix the grading on this structure and that will prevent it from moving. And another spot to see if the property is moving, uh, I would say more than normal or it is moving, settling, as you can see in between the veneer and the window frames, you can see how the, the wall is shifting in this direction and it's separating wider at the top and smaller at the bottom here. Yes, this is an expansion joint, but you can see where the wall has pulled in this direction. Again, I would say this is a pretty common find for a 1960s home. So I wouldn't say, hey, run from this property because it has foundation settlement. I would say, hey, it's to be expected it has foundation settlement, but you're gonna need to take some actions to stop it from moving anymore. Hey guys, if you like these type of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button. That really helps the traction and helps our YouTube videos get out there further and helps us out and ESIS gets paid. <laughs> Swinging out wide of the property, the first thing that we noticed is actually underneath the soffit area, we have two open junction boxes. And uh, I would say that's something that we didn't see inspected in the roof and we didn't see up close. So that's the purpose of that, you know, that close pass and that wide pass to help get a better opinion and see more things on the, on the property that we're evaluating. So uh, pretty cool find and it just shows you that the, the routine works, which is nice. All right, starting the close pass of the property on the back side of the yard, what we have here is we have a poor roof design in this location. And the reason why it's like this is this whole piece back here is an add-on. But whenever they added it on, you gotta think about how water flows and how this pitch goes. So all this water is gonna be falling off the roof here in this location. It's gonna be rolling down the roof and, and all pooling and running against the wall in this location. Easy spot for a water leak. But also as you look at this design, 
you can see the discoloration in the wall and it's all pooling in this location down below. And this is an easy spot that will eventually cause the slab to move. You have a, and it's already starting to erode away all the soil. This is something as a, as a home buyer, what you're gonna wanna do is take action immediately to fix these items because it's, this will cause water damage inside the structure and then the slab movement. And yes, it's something as easy as just a poor roof design that can ruin your structure. So easy, uh, I wouldn't say easy repair, but it, an easy spot to know that you're gonna need to repair items in this location. I'm not gonna open up this panel box. We already did open up the panel box, but I'm not gonna open it up for the video. But whenever you're purchasing a home and you're walking around determining if you like your home or not, or you wanna put in an offer, if you see a brand new panel box on an older property, that's a good sign. And it's showing you that they corrected the more important things like the mechanical items on a property. And uh, you don't, they didn't just do it cosmetically. They did a pretty good job cosmetic on the inside and we'll check that out in a minute. So talking about the, the grading and drainage around this structure a little bit more and the reason why that this home is starting to settle is you can see here that there's a lot of erosion across the slab on this area. So you need to add in some fill dirt, but also right here in the patio, there's a big open space and there's a large crack running through the patio. Well, that's because over time that the, the soil hasn't been taken care of or the cracks haven't been sealed and it's eroded away all the soil. So this back patio will eventually fail. And whenever you see a lot of ants in that area, that means that there's holding moisture and pretty much creating life for them. Also, I bring this up in a lot of my videos, but if you talk about termites, perfect area for termites. And especially over there on the other side of the property, you have you know areas, low soil, a lot of water sitting in the area. Your house is made out of wood. So there's a lot of conducive conditions to this property. We, I don't know if we saw any termites the first pass, but we will look again for the second pass. But again, if we see stuff like that, your home inspector or your termite inspector, actually it's different in Texas, will write up and recommend for a termite treatment on a property like this, just for the amount of conducive conditions. Uh, because you live in Houston, Texas, termites, big, big, big deal here. Not really part of home inspecting, but it is a good idea to think about the big picture of home inspecting and trees are play a big role in how your structure performs. And this tree is obviously dead and dying. And if you look how big these roots are on the structure and it's pointing towards the structure, what's gonna happen is these like roots decay and it can cause your structure to move a little bit in this location. So whenever you're forming your opinion of why the foundation is settled or about this, about your structure, you know, take a look at the environment around it, and this can play a role in why your slab's moving. This one's not really causing any issues uh, on this structure. I'm just mainly talking. Um, then other thing too is dead trees is a really good place to find termites, and I didn't find any, but doesn't mean that they're not there. Okay, so moving on the wide pass on the last pass of the outside of the structure, one thing that we noticed is that there's a lot of pitting on this slope on, on this roof structure. So it's something that would have been kind of hard to see by walking it. We kind of saw it from that angle, but now you can see the prominence of the pitting from the ground level. So it's always good to see things from several different angles. And following down this line here, you can see that there is a primary or secondary drain line to the HVAC unit. And you can see that it's pointed upwards. And whenever it's pointed upwards like that, it won't drain properly. And then also it should be positioned in front, of, in front of a window or a door. So if it does start leaking, you know there's something wrong. So I bet whenever we get in the attic area, we're gonna see something wrong. So that's my stuff on the exterior of the property. Now we're gonna to move to Josh and Josh is gonna do everything in the attic and the interior you saw. So you get a different inspector today and let's go see what he's gonna go find. All right, so next we're gonna tackle the attic space. Um, the first attic space that we're gonna look at is where they did the addition which is uh, kind of an unusual uh, little cubby hole that we're gonna go see and uh, found a couple of good finds, so let's go check it out. Okay, so we have a couple of issues that, uh, that I'm gonna recommend to have fixed for my buyer. Um, all of these are related to the HVAC system. The first thing that we see is right here, the re cold refrigerant line is missing insulation, torn up insulation. And so during the summer months when uh, the AC is running and the attic is warm, 
that's going to condensate and cause moisture problems. So we recommend that that be reinsulated. That's a pretty minor repair, but something that's uh, important to keep water from dripping down in this attic space. Now, the more pressing issue that we see is this is your primary drain coming off the AC unit. And we see right here that it is separated, pulled loose, and water is dripping down here, running down the shingles where the old roof used to be, all the way down over here and down into the interior wall. So obviously we know that water is getting down there. Uh, one thing that I'm gonna do uh, at the very end of this inspection is uh, do a thermal scan and moisture meter check in this location to see if it has uh, come all the way to the interior sheetrock. But we definitely know that obviously water is dripping down right now. So another easy fix is just reconnecting this drain line, but obviously very important. And the last thing uh, also related to drain lines is your pan uh, installed underneath the AC unit. Uh, they didn't install a drain line on the pan. So if water gets in the pan um, because the primary is backed up or uh, another issue, um, you're not going to have anywhere for that water to drain to. It's going to sit in that pan and cause it to rust out and could be a future water problem. So uh, definitely some problems that we want fixed, um, all related to drain line. The next thing that we see on the interior in our second pass is we test all uh, accessible outlets. So this one above the fireplace has uh, just the right light lit up, which tells me that this uh, outlet has an open neutral connection. And then the very next outlet that I come to is not working at all. So. All right, so like Chris explained on the exterior home, we do have some uh, settlement that we observed on this front corner, it's settling down. And so one of the things that I'm doing on the interior is I have my zip level system and I'm gonna check from this point to the corner and see how much it has settled and include that in the report for the client's information. So my zero point right here, I'm gonna take it over here. And we see that it is settled down 2.2 inches. So obviously some signs of settlement. They were recommend some repairs be done for. So one thing that uh, we also do as part of our final pass through on the interior is any tile shower base, uh, we do a load test on. So we use our shower pan stopper, fill it up with about two inches of water and let it sit. And then we come back through with our thermal camera and our moisture meter and we check to make sure that there uh, is no leaks in the shower pan. Uh, we also will go to the exterior wall and make sure that the shower pan is not leaking through the exterior wall outside. Okay, time for the home inspector breakdown. So like I said at the beginning of the video, these 1960 properties come with problems. And like, like I just predicted, we were going to find things. We didn't even really inspect the, thing, uh, the property before I did that intro and now going through, it is what we normally find on older properties, it has roof issues, HVAC issues, and then a little bit of foundation settlement. And it's sad to say, but it is true, most of these finds are very common on an older property. So just, you wanna be, prepare, be prepared to have an action plan whenever you purchase a property. Have an HVAC guy, have a roofer in your pocket, and maybe even a foundation or a landscaper to help fix these grading and draining issues. So the top three items, roof, HVAC, and foundations. We're never not saying don't buy the property, because actually this is a pretty good older property. It just has some mechanical issues and some roof issues and some grading stuff. So pretty common. And overall, I think they did a really good job of putting the money in the right places. They just Need, it just needs a little TLC. So that's it. That's Chris with A Action. If you like these types of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button and check us out on the next one. See ya.